second it. <laughs> under the more actions and it's yeah under the more actions menu. OK, got it. Thank you. Yep. So as I was saying, yes, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, and that's so that we can uh, refer to it later as we develop uh, FAQs. And it's also for you to be able to um, refer to the FAQs and know that they're going to be there with accuracy. So as I was saying, we'll cover some of the basics about what is the 1% for our program? What's the difference between a request for qualifications and a request for proposals? We'll tell you how to apply. We'll do a walkthrough of the call for entry website. Yeah, we'll do some background on how the art will be selected and the timeline and process for moving forward from those initial selections. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm James Martin, the public art administrator, and so uh, the first thing I'd like to do is is turn this over to Holly Hayden, consulting artist, to talk about the uh, the timeline as well as the um, locations and the budgets a bit. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm going to start sharing my screen, and it may be a little tiny depending on what device you're on, but this was also the attachment that I sent with your registration. So some of you may have already given this a once over. And I guess I can only see you, James, so thumbs up if you can see my share. Perfect. So what we're looking at here is kind of the overview of the, an aerial view of the new terminal and the garage. And these are all of the locations that art um, has been selected for these locations. So, and then also the timeline and the budget allotment for each one of these. So as you can see, um, as we go through these locations, we'll refer to this sort of I shape or H shape, and that's the terminal all right here, and then this is the parking garage. So you'll see different versions of this layout throughout the presentation um, from different angles, but this will be the one we'll keep referring back to so you can check which location we're talking about. So this one lists the first four locations, which are now closed. They're in process of being judged right now. So I know I recognize some of you from the first round of artist information sessions. Um, thank you for joining again. So the locations we'll be talking about this evening are the check-in hall, large floor-based ceramics. So the check-in hall is this area right here, and then we'll go into more detail about exactly where in the check-in hall those ceramics will be located. The next one is a ceiling-based light or sound, more of an experiential type installation in the connector. And the connector is right here, and it's essentially the connection between concourse A and concourse B. So that would be where the people movers are. So there would be um, experiential artwork going along there as people were passing between those two locations. Um, the next two are the stairwells in the parking garage and then the arrivals roadway, which is actually under the road. So those two locations are actually here and we'll look at different angles and photos of this too. So there's actually two stairwells that go on the front of the garages that you can actually see from the terminal across the street. And then when you arrive and you go down below into baggage or, and you're coming across the street for arrivals, well, there's, two there's two pedestrian, pedestrian walkways. And, walkways. Mm -hmm. and there might and be there a might little, be little feedback, feedback, James. I don't know if you can, can mute everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll mute all. Holly, just unmute okay. yourself. There we go. Thank you for that. So I think the feedback stopped. So um, I, that's the four we'll be talking about today. And those are due, we'll get into the timeline. Also, they're due February 13th. So there's plenty of time for you to review the RFQs and apply and ask all the questions that you'd like to. And then in the spring, I know we've had a lot of artists, especially painters, photographers, textile artists, different mediums like that. Um, this spring, we'll actually launch the call for artists for the two concourses, which are these two locations here. And there'll be various different wall 
areas for this. So we're calling it portable artwork, but it's portable slash can be attached to a wall or hung on a wall artwork. So we'll get more into that um, later this spring. So that's kind of the overview and all the prices are listed out too. So the total with what we're working with for our 1% for art, which James will get more into what that means for the city, um, is 5.65 million. And this is how it divides out in the different locations um, based on all the research and the um, meetings that we've had and all the information in the last two years, kind of deciding where in this whole space artwork would be best. So there's that. And if you want me to kick it back to you, James, to go right into that 1%. Unmute, James. Thank you for the reminder. Do you want to go over the uh, website address to download the specs packet? Absolutely. I may have to stop share and then reshare. Give me a second. And one thing, too, um, if anybody has questions, you want to go ahead and throw them in the chat also, or if for some reason, um, I'm going through this a little fast and you're like, oh wait, I missed that real quick. Just, just speak up and I can go back through it. So for all of the questions that you may have about what we've been doing and then also in the future, what we're going to do, the launch pad is kind of what we call it for all of this information is buildkci.com slash art. And everything about the project will live here. So as you scroll through, here's the link for Call for Artists. I'll start clicking on these in a minute. But just the main area here, most of the FAQs that kind of answered generic questions about the project and um, what can I submit and how can I connect, all of that's here. So we have our link to our Facebook page. We have the link for Call for Entry. Um, all of the things James will talk about here are also linked in here. So it's kcmo.gov slash art with specific information about the 1% program, learning about the Kansas City Municipal Art Commission. There's also a link here. So really anything you could want to know about the program that we've done is housed in this spot to click through. And this, we'll click on the call for artists, keeps a running tally of all those locations that we looked at in that eye shape and where they're at in the process. So you can take a peek at these, and even the ones that say closed, you can still click on these and read about the RFQ and follow along with the timeline. So we've tried to make it really easy. Okay, I've actually had a couple questions come up already, okay. and uh, they're both regarding the, uh, the, the call for artists for the portable artworks, which is mm -hmm. our third call for artists. Uh, we're really not going to address questions about that call for artists tonight, other than to say, yes, indeed, there will be more information sessions like this one, specifically with that call for artists. Uh, so one of the uh, attendees tonight asked the question about whether uh, 110 volt power would be appropriate for one of those portable artworks in the third rollout, and we'll have to defer that question uh, in, in order to uh, verify that with the uh, architectural team. Yeah, part of that too is those walls aren't built yet. So I guess we can't really tell you exactly um, which location of having an artwork that may need an outlet would be the best location. So look for that information around April. April 21, so this spring, is when we really want to have more art information sessions about those. So everyone that signed up tonight, you're on my email list, so I'll make sure to send you that directly. Terrific. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So that uh, buildkci.com slash art is your home for uh, information about the KCI public art projects. To get a, a bigger uh, picture of what the 1% for Art program is and some of the other things that we've done, you can go to kcmo.gov slash art. That is the main web page for the city of Kansas City, Missouri. And you'll see we have three tabs and the- uh, There we go. 
the 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 introduction to public art tab just kind of gives a, a background about Kansas City, Kansas City's involvement with public art. The Municipal Art Commission is the body of appointees by the mayor who uh, oversee uh, visual art uh, that occurs on public ground. And so uh, they will be part of the approval process for the works of art at KCI. And then the other tab is for the 1% for art program. And that gives a bit of history about the, the program. Uh, it also includes down at the bottom of the page some background informational type links. Uh, if you wanted to see some of our past projects, um, you can go to the KC Studio Magazine website in order to see past projects over the 34 year history of the program. Uh, you can see instructions there on how to apply for a 1% for art project, uh, which we're going to cover tonight also. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, two things, how KCMO selects public art for 1% for art projects and the typical requirements for KCMO contracts. So uh, the process that we use is laid out very, very clearly in that document, and it, it's a series of uh, uh, it's a series of committee processes that approve the one percent for art projects. There's a, a selection panel that makes recommendations of two to five semifinalists. Uh, two, uh, they decide on the two to five semifinalists. Th those artists are, uh, those artists are asked uh, to make proposals. And so it's really only at that stage uh, of the game where artists are actually make, making proposals, making ideas, concepts for these locations. The, uh, the first uh, level of judging that goes on is with uh, qualifications. In other words, uh, uh, evaluating your portfolios. And we use the call for entry website to do that. Uh, before I move on to that, uh, there was a question about, well, what does 1% for art refer to? So 1% for art refers to the uh, estimated costs, 1% of the estimated costs of a project for above ground vertical construction is set aside for what is called the aesthetic adornment. Uh, so KCI, the number that we came up with was $5,650,000, and that number was arrived at by uh, taking 1% of the above ground vertical costs. Uh, Kansas City, Missouri does have another 1% for art program where the funds come from general obligation bond projects. And uh, I should point out that um, you can receive information about public art opportunities directly in your email inbox. And Holly, if you would draw their attention to item number four there, kcmo.gov subscribe is the website you want to go to in order to receive notices of our opportunities in your email inbox. Look for public art opportunities and just give us your email address and we'll be happy to do that. Uh, now going back to callforentry.org. Um, uh, callforentry.org is the website tool that the city uses to manage artist submissions and we'd like to um, do a short uh, walkthrough with some of the basics of that with you. So bear with us a moment while Holly brings that up. There we go. Can you see it? And I am logged in as myself. So to start out, you'll want to create your own artist profile within Call for Entry, and that's a free service that you can do. So you'll upload your portfolio images, your CV, your resume, um, anything that you would like on there. So it's easier to then apply for Call for Artists. You just click on the the different items that they require. So it makes it really easy. 
As you can see on the screen there, there are lots of uh, municipalities and uh, organizations that use this. Uh, so once you have a, pr a profile on call for entry, you learn about opportunities all over the nation. Mm -hmm. So to find the KCI uh, calls, simply enter KCI in the search box. Yep, and they come up right away. And if you don't want to do it that way, here I'll toggle back over buildkci.com slash art, our main hub. You go to call for artists, and then you simply just click on which one you're interested in, and it goes directly to the cafe page. And when we say cafe, that's call for entry. Same thing. So yeah. So two ways to get there. And Holly, do you want to cover the um, the part of cafe where they can uh, indicate their team or collaborative option? Yeah, so Cafe's added a couple new options um, since I've used it in the last couple of years. So right now I'm simply just looking at the large scale ceramics uh, call. So I'll click on apply now and then you agree. That agreement is just states that city officials are not eligible basically. So I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. It might take me a second to see it. Oh, it might be in my profile. Here we go. So under your profile, when you create one, this is yeah, my information here, there's an option now that says, is this an individual or a team account? So if you have multiple artists or a team, you can actually click this team button and add all of your team partners in here. So you're submitting one application. You don't all have to submit separately. So that makes it a little easier. So there's that part. Let me go back to where we were. And so, I, yeah, more info. There we go. This is what you'll actually see the main page. More info, and you see the apply apply now button. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a question: uh, What if I don't know yet who I want to work with for fabrication? Uh, that's fine. Artists are eligible to apply as individuals. Um, you're eligible to apply as individuals. The uh, the collaborative option is we're just trying to make that more explicit so that artists understand that that teams are eligible. Um, there was a question about does changing your profile to team do it permanently? That would have to be a question for the cafe help desk. You might have to mm -hmm. toggle that radio button back and forth, but the cafe help desk can help help with that. Mm -hmm. And I believe you can apply as different things, but yeah, don't don't take my word for that. But yeah, the help desk for call for entry is incredibly helpful and really speedy at getting back to your your questions. So once you've applied through cafe, um, I'll click through that. There's the application what it looks like. Right. OK, thank you. So we've asked for an, an, an image list. We've asked for a letter of interest. We've asked for your resume or CV. And then examples of your work. Uh, so once you've applied um, by the February 13th deadline, after the deadline, the selection panel will have approximately a month to uh, choose the semifinalists. And so, um, that would probably be, uh, let's say, late March that semifinalists might be announced, perhaps early May, or excuse me, late March or early April. Oh, then, okay, I'll show you. Yeah, let me show you where to find that to easily find the dates for everything. Sorry, I'm going back to more info. At the bottom of all of the calls, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, here's the timeline with everything laid out. So when it's due is highlighted here, shortlist notified, RFP issued, RFP due, and then when, our, when finalists are notified. So you can kind of follow along the timeline on this. Okay, and we've had a couple questions come up in chat. So let me address those. Um, for the KCI project, are there renders or photos of where the various artwork will live within the, art, within the airport? 
Yes, and the best place to find that is um, buildkci.com slash art. Mm -hmm. Slash go. art. And up at the top, there's gallery. So there's updated images and videos of all of the airport progress. Also, if you would like to see our presentation that we gave last April, if you, you're in buildkci.com slash art, if you go to timeline here, click on the timeline. Right here, this arts and culture at KCI public presentation. There's an online uh, deck that we made that clicks through every single one of the renderings and talks about them all as well. So that might be the easiest place to see what we're talking about and see all those renderings. I don't know if maybe I can share that real quick just so you can see what it looks like if you click on it so it looks familiar. Give me one second. And that may answer the majority of your questions. It will look like this. I'm just going to click through it super fast. Like what is public art? You can look at other examples from other airports. And then we show all of the renderings so far. So you can see all of these and it talks about where they're located, all that. So I think maybe that answered your question. So uh, buildkci.com slash art is the launch pad for so much of the basic information. Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, address another question. Um, if a team applies, where does one put CVs and images for each member? That's an excellent question. And um, the way that call for entry works is it will only accept one CV or resume. And so what you have to do is create a multiple page, multiple page document and make sure you've uploaded not only your resume or CV, but also your, your uh, collaborative partners. Uh, the images, uh, there are a limited number of images um, that are allowable. And so what I have seen uh, artists do is to divide up the number of images and videos allowable uh, among the team members. Uh, there's another question. Does KCI have preferred vendors, let's say, for LED walls? That's uh, the question. That, I mean, the, the, the LED walls, for example, um, LED walls for uh, informational kiosks, et cetera, are being acquired out in, in, separate process from the one percent for art program and so uh, you know the answer would be yes there's probably a procurement process for those if an artist were to use leds um, that might be a situation where the artist would research uh, the LED supplier and perhaps you know come to some sort of agreement, et cetera, but that would have to be uh, um, investigated at that time. James is right on that one too. I'll, I'll jump in. That would be the perfect kinds of questions that the semifinalists, the shortlisted artists, would get to ask the architects and the designers of the airport. So those types of questions, if they did have questions about vendors or uh, specific hardware that they may use. But yeah, we're not requiring artists to use any specific companies for this particular project. So there's a question about the Im image list. How is the image list used? Uh, it, the image list is used to see uh, the, the body of the portfolio all at once. The, the information on the image the information does appear on an image in the slideshow view. Um, but to avoid the necessity to flip back and forth between images, we've decided to include an image list also so that there be a, could be a quick reference if a selection panelist wanted to look at the information that way. So let's see, where are we? We have uh, kind of covered how to apply on callforentry.org. Um, we got through, yeah, so I think we were at 
we talked about the submission materials, the evaluation criteria, I think was next on our list here. Yeah, so the evaluation criteria is listed right on the call for artists. Mm -hmm. There are five evaluation criteria. Uh, excellence, relevant prior experience, appropriateness to site and project, durability, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, there are also uh, the requirements that uh, the requirement that uh, an artist be an individual rather than a corporation. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Holly for one second. Okay, sure. Thank you. I'll let James grab that call. Um, I cannot see the chat while I'm sharing screen. So I don't know, Justin, if anyone's having uh, or put anything in the chat there, if you want to shout it out. Uh, I believe that you're pretty much caught up. Um, one question that I was going to reference for the person that asked what I think there was a question about. I'm not on a team or I'm looking mm -hmm. to collaborate. Do you want to make reference to what we have available for collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. So if I toggle back over here to our our main page here, we'll go to buildkci.com slash art again as our springboard. In the information here, we have the question, how can I connect with other artists, fabricators, and teams? So we have created a Facebook page right here, facebook.com slash group slash buildkciart. And you can visit there. That would be the place that you could connect with teams. And I know there's a couple fabricators on the call today. They're more than happy to talk you through um, some of your ideas and how to apply. We won't be personally linking any, any teams together. That's between the artist and the fabricator, however you want to make that agreement happen. But we've made that forum that uh, will allow that. So I'll jump on the page just so you can see what it looks like too if you click on it. Let's see. Yeah, it's the new terminal art group. So there's been a little bit of chatter on here. But yeah, you'll have to join and we'll obviously let you join. So we're just keeping it a private group at this time just so we can talk about information in between here if you want to shout out, you know, if you have your name or your phone number or something on here so it stays private. And it looks like you've got James back. James, don't forget to go off mute. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yes, I'm back. Uh, there's a question about the DEI metric. Is that mm -hmm. score based on a statement of commitment to those values or based on the demographic info of the individual team themselves? Uh, so let me read that out for you here. It says the city of Kansas City, Missouri seeks a diverse, equitable and inclusive group of artists to produce public art for this new single, excuse me, new single terminal and parking at KCI. Selection panelists will consider diversity, equity, and inclusion when evaluating artists in conjunction with the city's policies on contracting and hiring practices. And so the way that that is working practically is that our Municipal Art Commission has um, uh, made a commitment to those values and shared that commitment via a letter with the selection panelists. Um, it is the DEI metric is not being based on the demographic info of the individual team themselves because we didn't collect that going in. So that is that will be up to the selection panelists. Uh, um, uh, iterative process as they go through the applications. And that's also something too when we're talking about the application materials. Let me scroll back up here. This letter of intent is really important. So not just your portfolio and what the artwork looks like, but the letter of intent describing your interest in the project, describing your team, describing you as an artist, how you work a little bit about yourself. That's really going to be the time you get to introduce yourself to those selection panelists. So yeah, if you do want to include any demographic information in that, you are more than willing to do that. It's not a requirement. So that would be the place to, to showcase that. There's a question from Keisha Jordan. Can I resubmit an entry? I would like to pull delete my previous submission. Yes, you can. For this round or for the last round? I guess yeah. I have a question. There's so many, the timelines are overlapping. So maybe we could uh, 
maybe answer that question. I don't know this, if you want to answer it now or offline to look yeah, that one up. It's for this round. And so yeah. um, it's my belief that you can. I think I have to go in and mark your application as uh, uh, incomplete. And that allows you to um, to redo the application. So I'm making myself a note here to after the meeting, mark your application as incomplete, and then you should be able to make those changes. Absolutely. So anytime between now and then the deadline, February 13th, um, you should be able to make changes to your application, James. And then I think there's in cafe, you can save your application, but not submit it. So if you think you may make changes or you're waiting a couple weeks till maybe you get your whole team together, you can absolutely do that. OK, um, so there's been a question about. Um, can we dive into more detail about the stairway towers? And so maybe that is. Um, a good segue away from the. Um, cafe call for entry website. Yeah, to detail. we can. Let me jump on that. So we'll kind of move away from the process a little bit and really dive into the project itself. And just keep in mind too, this will be quite an overview. We won't be getting into exact measurements of things and where this is gonna go and all that. Those are on the spec sheet, but that's only for the semifinalists and the request for proposals phase. So we just wanna make sure that we're uh, giving you all the information for your actual first qualifications application in this round. And then the proposal stage will actually dive into more specifics. But let me share my screen here so we can go through this. Got too many windows open. Give me a second. Okay. So this specs packet, again, you can find it at buildkci.com slash art. You can download the full specs packet. And then also within the call for entry, right above where it said apply now, it said download specifications packet. That is also this. So this one does include the areas from the last call for entry, just to make sure you're getting a cohesive view of all the different locations that we're including so it doesn't look disconnected. So first view here when we were talking about renderings this will be and I, if you can see my sort of hand mouse here going along this is the approach coming up on your right side here will be the terminal and over here will be the parking garage and you'll see more renderings of that as well so if we say the word check-in hall great hall or head house that's this this part of the building that we're referring to. So this is where you would enter, and this is the check-in area in here. So this corner right here, I'm gonna refer to this in some of the other diagrams when we're looking at it from different angles, so you can see uh, which wall we're talking about. On project description, you can sort of read this at your leisure. It's discussing about the new single terminal parking at KCI. Here's another rendering of that I shape or that H shape, and these are all of the locations. So these first four, like we talked about, those are now closed, those RFQs. So we'll be discussing number five, six, seven, eight. So that's in the check-in hall again, the connector. And here's that roadway that you come, or right here, here's the roadway that you come through right here, and then this is the parking garage here. So when we're talking about those crosswalks and underpasses, they're actually here. They connect the terminal to the parking garage, and then those stairwells are also right here. And to clarify, Holly, if I may, the, oh, sure. it is a double a double level roadway, mm -hmm. so it is different than what we have today, but very common at many other airports of similar size to Kansas City International and others. So um, while you see it on that top down graphic it may look like a single roadway, oh, yeah. it's in fact four lanes of traffic stacked on top of four lanes of traffic like an overpass. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying. 
So some of these I'll go through quickly because they're the other locations. I'm just noting in the upper right corner, you'll see that I shape or H shape. The area highlighted in red will be the area that the information is talking about. So this was the check-in hall. I'm just going to kind of speed through these. These aren't the locations we're talking about today. But if you want to know more, they're here. And there's different cutaway renderings. There's all kinds of views in here. So yeah, let's start with the check-in hall ceramics locations. So remember that corner that I pointed out. Now we're looking at it from the inside. So this is that same corner and the approach is coming from this direction, the roadway here. So these two locations notated in red up here are the two locations um, for ceramics. So that's actually in front of this wall slash wall of windows here, and then on the other end. So different specs are included in here. It talks about uh, pounds per square foot and the location, um, some other specs like this. I don't wanna get into too many details about it, one thing I want to do point out, um, lighting for your ceramics, that's something that the artist will need to consider, and that's part of um, the whole budget as well. So if you have a piece that needs to be lit in a certain way, or you would like it lit in a certain way, um, what if you get to the request for proposal stage, that would be the time that you would work with the architects again to see what the natural light there's there's so much natural light in this check-in hall what the different times of day what the light would look like and then what kind of lighting may be required for your piece so that's kind of what that means going down here this is an aerial view again we're looking at these two locations this middle is cut out considering this whole length here is 700 feet long so it's quite a large area so on the two ends, and again, it's right near the glass wall, so you'll actually be able to see these ceramics from the outside as well, are two locations. And part of the ceramics want or ask is creating a platform or plinth that they would, they would be on. So they would be elevated a little bit and then be large enough that nobody could throw things in them, like they're not mistaken for a trash can or something like that. So those provisions are... Um, in consideration as well. So the specs are on here for height, width, length, all of these. And again, this is a side view. So this would be the roadway here that you're going through. And this is that glass that you can see through as well. So that's kind of what it would look like. Holly, we've um, got a question. Yeah. Sure, the yeah, before I jump to the next thing. Uh, so there was a question about uh, how will that how will it work for the ceramics to be tall enough to see be seen from the roadway while staying within the 50 pounds per square foot limit for that for the plants that that will be uh investigated at the rfp stage mm -hmm. at this point we're just really trying to provide that basic info to get people to apply mm -hmm. um there are also questions about um Will this cover up the window or, and what will you see from the inside? You know, I think that's up to the artist to, mm -hmm. uh, up to the artist design. Mm -hmm. you know, um, there, there haven't been specifications discussed about whether the uh, view of the window should be completely blocked or open, et cetera. It's, it's, it's up, to, up to the design. There's another question regarding ceramics. Uh, are you requesting functional or can the work be suspended from the roof? Can the works be, again, that's a, that's more of an RFP question. That's, that's a question about actual proposals. And uh, this one too, one of the things, there's another art location that was in the first round that is a hanging ceiling piece that would go in this area. So there will already be ceiling artwork. So having additional ceiling artwork may be contradicting to that. So this was envisioned as a floor based piece. So keep that in mind as well. And then yes. it does have specs here of the approximate height is approximately 35 feet. But again, depending on how your process works, whether or not your ceramics are 
um, thick or thin or big or small or tall, uh, the weight's going to vary. So like James says, that we would get into that in the RFP phase. Did I get that uh, last question? Yeah, so there was a question about, it's, is it two-sided? In other words, yes, the, the, the works will be visible from both sides, mm -hmm. interior and exterior. Um, can metal be substituted for ceramics, such as a large 3D metal vase? Well, the reason that um, ceramics have been stressed is that it's to honor the long history and important history of ceramics as an art form in the Kansas City area in the teaching and collecting of and, and making of, exhibiting of. And so the commitment really is for uh, ceramics. And we did have that question asked also on somebody that registered. They had um, a different material. I don't know if it was a fiberglass or a plastic or something to mimic ceramics. Um, we are really stressing that, yes, we, we would like ceramics in this area. Also, something I didn't mention, this wall here, it's kind of hard to see in this view, but we'll see it in a different view, is vein cut natural limestone. So there'll be a, sort of a conversation with Kansas City natural history and then the Kansas City art history with the ceramics and the location as well. Um, so there's a question about where is this plinth located? It's located on the floor on the north and south windows. Um, here. It seems like there are some engineering questions, scale questions, et cetera. And I just have to reiterate that um, those sorts of questions will be explored at the RFP stage, mm -hmm. recognizing that um, uh, there will be questions that we'll have to explore with architects and engineers. We, Let's see. Um, I don't want to ready? move. You good on ceramics? Any other sort of just, I guess, questions about the space or or anything like that? We'll move on to the connector. OK, and there is one more question about ceramics. Sure. Uh, asking if it can be uh, possible to up the pound per square foot, pound per square foot capacity. It's certainly something we can look into. No harm in looking into it. Mm -hmm. Um, is the plinth part of the design? Yes. The plinth, according to the um, specifications, Holly, if you could scroll back up the specifications. Yeah. It says uh, the, it explains that it's part of the project budget. Yeah, to be designed and engineered within the project budget right here. Ceramics to be displayed on a plinth. So yeah, what that looks like and how that relates to the artwork would be up to the artist as well and part of their design, their overall design. Okay, and we can come back to things too at the Q&A in the end. So we can definitely do that. So we'll move on to the connector. Um, again, back to the eye shape here, that was this long passageway essentially that goes between concourse A and concourse B, and it will have two sets of people movers on this. And then right in the middle, will actually have an airfield viewing area with a historical display. So we had envisioned sort of an experiential installation in this area that would be ceiling based. So if you've been to other airports like Chicago or Atlanta or Indianapolis, they have some really cool installations as you're on the people mover going from one location to another. So that can be um, audio based, light based, um, have different visual components, color based, and um, we're not we're not setting that theme, but any of those things would be applicable in this location. So there's some specifics about this, um, just talking about light, sound, or fixed elements um, that passengers can experience as they travel along the length of the connector. And on either side of that, too, keep in mind are glass walls that you can see out into the airfield. Let me go to the next one. This is another sort of close up aerial view. So this side would be concourse A, this is turned. So if this were turned 90 degrees clockwise, it would look like this. 
So we're trying to avoid having anything over the top of this middle area because it will have other displays and other things going on. But any of the ceiling space over these moving walkways or these is free for the artist to interpret how they want to do that installation. Let's see. And that one, yeah, we just really had a quick overview. So I don't know if there's questions about that before I don't want to go too fast through it. Holly, before you take those, there's a, there's an attendee, Denise, who has a hand raised. So oh, Denise, okay. if you want to come off mute, if you need to ask a question, you can do that. There was also just a question asked um, about, and I just lost it, um, about the screen being shared. So uh, yeah, thank you, Mark James, for, um, for, uh, clarifying that if you if you can't see the screen right now, which is an overview of the terminal connector, uh, best thing to be might be to um, log out and log back in. And of course, a reminder that this is being recorded and will be published so you can uh, catch up on anything you missed. Yes, and you can also download the specs packet at buildkci.com slash art. That too. And look at, yeah, look at the exact same thing we are. Do we have another question about the connector? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So and yeah, if somebody can't access the chat on your device, yeah, feel free to to shout out your answer or raise your hand, for sure. Um, well, we will move on to the garage. So, looking at our eye shape again, if you were in the terminal and you were looking across the roadway, you'll see two stairwells. This is just one end and the other one's on this side over here. So it goes the entire length. So this has a couple of different components. So this one we may talk about just a little, a little more in depth. So obviously you can see that the whole front of this is glass. Right here is actually the elevator shaft. So there's a surface on each one of the landings here and that butts up against the elevator shaft. So just note that nothing can be sort of drilled through that. But the main area is this glass right here. So there's two opportunities. Let me see if I can see it on this. Either through the middle of the stairs in between there, and it shows kind of this sliver of how it would go all six stories, six or seven, I wanna make sure seven. I'm saying the right thing, seven stories all the way through from the top or the bottom in between. So you would actually, as people were going up the stairwell, you would be walking around that installation. And you would also be able to see it from outside through. So it can be sculptural, it can be lighting, but it, it can be attached and knowing that it's right next to people. So this is something that will probably get touched quite a bit. So keeping that in mind as durability is one of the criteria also for judging. So this particular location is gonna need a high durability factor. And there are attachment points at the top and the bottom, and then potentially within there, depending uh, what your artwork may look like. But also there's a space, I don't know if we can really see it, against the glass, kind of in a little inset that's a 10 inch inset if you wanted to do a piece actually touching the glass on the front here. So it wouldn't be within the stairwell, it would be on the, it would be on the inside of the glass, but inset a little bit. So there's that option as well. Could be lighting, could be sculptural also. Let's see, here's another look at that, just kind of with the cutaway without the glass there. Um, and this Kansas City here is a, a placeholder for lighting, just so you could see the scale also. So this is the side view kind of saying if you had a piece, what its maximum width could be within this area. Holly, there's a question about the... And then uh, here's a rendering. Oh, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? There's a question about the weight capacity. Let's go yeah. back. I don't have them all memorized. Yeah, the structural requirements, I've got it pulled up. It's uh, for the garage stairwells. Uh, load on the roof structure cannot exceed 500 pounds point load located in the center of the roof and oh, installation right. area. 
or alternatively, multiple point loads within the installation area totaling no more than 500 pounds. For example, five point loads of 100 pounds equally spaced. The gap between stair runs is approximately 17 feet, six inches long, two feet wide and 90 feet tall. Mm -hmm. The glass area between the mullions in the window varies, but generally six feet by 12 feet and 10 inches deep. Mm -hmm. So those are those two locations that we were talking about. So yeah, it does um, outline all of those structural requirements here. The 10 inch the space is not between two pieces of glass. It's in nope. the it's in the mullion area. It's between the walkway and the glass. Yes. So there's that. Here's a few renderings too. Everything doesn't have the finishes. It's just white. It was a 3D rendering on these two. So as you would be walking up the stair, the artwork could be here or it could be in here. This is that sort of 10 inch gap that they're talking about. Can the installation cover both the internal space and the curtain glass? That seems like, again, that's something that'll be addressed in the proposal stage. Um, and I would think that if that's an artist proposal, that could certainly be entertained. And keep in mind, there's two of these. So they can either be uh, sort of twin installations or they could be two completely different ones as well. There's a question about the building being built already. No, however, the, the designs are at, a, at an advanced stage and materials have been ordered. And you can watch the progress too and the videos on buildkci.com. Can the artwork sit directly on the sills? That, that's again a, a detailed question that's going to come up at the proposal stage. It's not something that I can answer in tonight's meeting. Yeah. And also, yeah, keep in mind about that durability. Um, something that's not tethered to something um, wouldn't be appropriate in this location. Can it be installed from the outside? Again, that's a proposal stage question. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, give me the thumbs up when you want me to move on. I just want to make yeah, sure we're hitting everyone. Okay. So this one is the arrivals roadway. So like Justin was saying, again, this eye shape here, it's actually underneath this road. So when you get your, when you go down the escalator and you get your baggage and you're coming out of the baggage claim, you're under the road. So right above you here is what we were just looking at with the stairwell up here, right above you or over here actually, and you're actually under that. So this one, um, we're trying to leave open to interpretation a little bit as much as possible, but there's going to be a lot of uh, specifics that we'll, we'll go through in, again, that proposal stage. So let me go to here. So here's another view. Oh, here, here you can see the underpass here of where we're looking at. So this has a couple of components, and I know I had some questions that got emailed in as well about when it says um, there may be other treatments, paint or other media upon the ceiling structure. We would like the main installation to be lighting of some sort, but as you can see, this will just be concrete. So if there's a painting treatment or something else and other components or accessories to that lighting artwork, that's applicable as well. So keep that in mind that it could be multiple components, but nothing's really hanging down. It's sort of within all of this area above. And then also keeping in mind that there'll be traffic signals, there'll be signage, there'll be some other things that the artist will have to work around. So that's why this whole space it's quite a long space and it's two of these. And again, you can see where their stairwells are in comparison. Or it's right there, yeah. So there's, it goes over commercial lanes and the arrivals lanes too. And then where there's these planters also. So it's kind of hard to see in this rendering, 
but the spaces above here and along, you can see the crosswalk here marked, they'll actually be planters here. So there'll be live greener, greenery on either side of this artwork space. So the lighting will really enhance this entire area. So that's kind of the point of this, is this will be the first thing people see as they arrive after they get their bag. And maybe they're going to the commer commercial lanes to grab an Uber or a Lyft or get picked up by whoever's coming on the arrivals lane. Um, they will see this. So everyone that um, arrives at the airport, yeah, should essentially see this artwork. Let's see, here's just some more diagrams and just showing kind of the other components that are going to be around it. Here's the stairwell. So you'll see glass, you'll see concrete, you'll see those planters again right here. Oh, yeah, that was the last on there. I don't know if we want to do specific questions about this, if anyone has some. Be quiet. Okay. Uh, While we're doing that, I'll click through some other renderings. These are the concourses that'll be later on. But oh, yeah, oh, there is a question about um, is this slide deck available for download? Yes. That's at buildkci.com slash art. And then look for call for artists. And then download project specifications packet. Yeah, so this exact same one you can download. So here's just some other renderings, some of the ones that we just didn't go over before. This was, I know I'm going backwards a little bit, but this was that limestone wall and the check-in hall that you can see through the glass as well. And all the way to the right here and then all the way on the other end will be where the ceramics would go. And here's the crosswalk on the top. So underneath this would be that arrivals roadway. There's a question. Um, are there any opportunities for framed artwork? Yes, um, and that that may have been missed at the beginning of the of the session tonight. Um, that will be the third call for artists, which uh, we will be sending out information about that uh, this spring. And so, um, the way to receive that opportunity directly in your email inbox is uh, kcmo.gov slash subscribe, which I'm putting in chat now. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, I said before, if you registered for this artist session, I do have your email, so I can put you on uh, our email list too to send out. So look for that uh, April 2021. We'll have additional artist information sessions about wall-based artwork, portable artwork, uh, framed painting, photography, textiles, digital. There's a question, will all the art installations be done prior to the opening of the terminal to the public? Yes, all work needs to be installed um, by December 2022. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom of all the RFQs, it also has that on the timeline. So you can refer back to that. Just kind of clicking through some other views here while we were chatting. There's a question about the framed artwork. Will that work be changed out? Potentially it could be moved if there's a need to move it. Uh, however, the the what we refer to as portable art at this point is not envisioned to be rotating on a regular basis. There might very well be a completely separate exhibition series that would feature uh, rotating exhibitions, but that would be funded in a different way than the 1% for Art program, and uh, my office does not have purview over that process currently. Uh, 
I'll stop sharing that. If there's something that anybody wants me to go back to, um, we kind of blasted through that pretty fast. Sorry if it was super fast for everyone. Um, yeah, if there's additional questions, we can open it up too so everyone doesn't have to type in the chat. Uh, you can just ask. Everyone's on it. You're good. Everyone's okay. ready to apply. So I'm looking at our agenda. We've covered the uh, details of the locations. Um, so after that initial, the initial qualifications, the initial Sorry. artist submissions are reviewed. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be a short list of semifinalists. From that group, a, a finalist and an alternate will be recommended to the Municipal Art Commission and the Municipal Art Commission would vote on the finalist and alternate at, the, at that time. Also, I want to make sure I hit some of the questions that people emailed me prior. Um, a big question, can I submit for multiple locations? Absolutely. You can submit for as many as you would like. Just I, keep, I, oh, go ahead. About the parking garage, I meant to ask it earlier. Um, will those levels be color coded in any way, do you know? They are. There are plans for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will that information be made available further in the process? Like if you're selected for that section? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That's all mm -hmm. I had. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, yeah, feel free also to send James or I an email. Uh, you have my email. Uh, I, that's where the registration came from. So if you want to reply to that, if you think of something later tonight in the next couple weeks, um, we do want the questions back within the next week. So then we can publish an FAQ from both of these meetings um, just to have that actually online so you can refer back to what we answered. But yeah, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out anytime. And thank you all for the feedback regarding ceramics. I will take that uh, advice forward and see if we can work on that a little bit. OK. No further questions. All right, so we had somebody just join. For those of you that joined us well into the presentation tonight, we've actually wrapped up. Mm -hmm. But please tune in to buildkci.com slash art. And you can find uh, most of the info we covered tonight there. And uh, you'll find the FAQs there also. Buildkci.com slash art. Yep. And the same, if you couldn't join for the entire session tonight, or if you know of other artists that want to join, we'll have an identical session this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.